Our title today um, is Odd Lewis Structures. So today what we're going to do is we are going to look at some compounds that don't obey um, the octet rule. And so the first one we want to look at is an incomplete octet. And the three elements that you're going to always keep in, um, keep in mind that are okay to not have a full octet in terms of their Lewis structures are compounds that contain beryllium, boron, and aluminum. So these can be stable without a full eight electrons surrounding them. So for instance, um, let's look at boron. Let's look at boron trifluoride, BF3. So boron has three valence electrons and hi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boron has three valence electrons and fluorine has seven valence electrons and we have three fluorine. So that means we've got um, what did I say? We've got 3 plus 21, so that means that we've got 24 electrons that we need to account for in this compound. So, we're going to start with our central atom, which comes first. So we'll have B, the boron, and then we've got a bonded pair for one fluorine, a bonded pair for the other fluorine, and a bonded pair for the third fluorine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fill in for our, we call, we call these atoms that are coming off of our central atom, we call them ligands. So we're going to fill in for our ligands. Because ligands, Ligands always obey octet. Always. Okay, so if we count up then, we're going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. So our ligands all, are all following octet, and we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 electrons. So all of our electrons are accounted for. Um, and so we might look at this thing and think, well, but wait a minute. Here's boron with 2, 4, 6, but we have to keep in mind beryllium, boron, and aluminum um, can be stable with an incomplete octet. So this would be our Lewis diagram for boron trifluoride. Okay, what other kinds of crazy Lewis structures do we have to be on the lookout for? Odd electron structures. So, we have two examples of those. Um, it's going to be nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. Okay, and they're a little funky. Well, let's just see what happens. Um, let's see what happens with nitrogen. So, let's first of all go for the NO nitrogen monoxide. So oxygen has six valence electrons and nitrogen has five valence electrons. So that means we have a total of 11 electrons that we have to account for. All right. So <clears throat> we've got a nitrogen. 
oxygen. Now, oxygen always, always follows octet. So, two, four, six, eight. And then let's just try to fill in with the nitrogen. Two, four, six, eight. And so then what do we have total? Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. And we only have eleven electrons to account for. So we've got way more valence electrons that are than are there in that compound. So what this thing actually ends up looking like is this. It's going to be N. We're going to have a double bond with oxygen. Oxygen is going to have a full octet, 2, 4, 6, 8. And what nitrogen will actually do Nitrogen goes with seven. Two, four, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so nitrogen monoxide is going to have, nitrogen is going to have seven electrons. Now, we actually um, not only produce this, but produce the nitrogen dioxide when we added the nitric acid to the brass shot the brass BB, um, trying to oxidize the copper and the zinc out of that brass so we could figure out the mass percent of copper. And I told you that the first product is going to be nitrogen monoxide, but because it's incredibly unstable, it right away is going to react with oxygen in uh, the atmosphere to produce nitrogen dioxide. Now, nitrogen dioxide is also an odd electron structure for nitrogen. So, um, let's, let's do the nitrogen dioxide. So NO2, we're going to have uh, 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 7, 19 electrons, right? We already can see right now that this is going to be, this is going to be bizarre. Um, and so, this is what it looks like. We're going to end up having a nitrogen. We are going to have a double bond with oxygen. Single bond on this side. We're going to have one there. Two lone pairs there. Three lone pairs there. Now, this is bizarre asymmetrical, asymmetrical thing here. Um, so this oxygen two four six eight, this oxygen two four six eight, and this nitrogen two four six seven. Okay, so these two right here, you guys, you just have to be aware of them. Now we're going to come back to this NO two because. This isn't the end of the story, but what we can what we can keep in mind here is that both of these compounds um, are extremely reactive because nitrogen is sitting with seven, ele uh, seven electrons, and so nitrogen is going to be um, needing to pick up an extra electron. So this doesn't exist hardly at all. This is brown smog. And we made this, right? We saw this in the copper nitric acid reaction. Okay, um, this compound is actually really important in living systems. I'm going to leave it at that. All right, and then um, last but not least, the other one that you're going to see a lot of is an expanded octet. So in an expanded octet, orbitals are actually um, used in bonding. So, 3D 
4D, 5D orbitals. So when we're talking about valence electrons and covalent bonding, we're talking about s orbitals and p orbitals. Okay, and that's the orbitals that electrons are being shared in. But what we can also see is that elements that have um, that have d orbitals are able to utilize d orbitals to expand their ability to share electrons. So let's look at an example of this. Um, let's look at phosphorus pentachloride, PCl5. So phosphorus has five valence electrons. I'm going to lose track, I think. So five from the from the phosphorus. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. Seven times five is 35. So we've got 40 electrons that we have to account for. Now, um, the first thing we're going to do is put a bonded pair in for each chlorine. Already we see that our phosphorus is way over, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All of our ligands have to follow octet, so let's fill them in. And then let's count up our electrons and see if we have any more to account for. So, all of our ligands have 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. Okay, so there they are, you guys. There is the Lewis structure for phosphorus pentachloride. Now, what if I needed to account for 42 electrons instead of 40? My ligands cannot go over octet. So that means that I would have to put a lone pair on my central atom. So if your ligands are all following octet and you still have more electrons that you need to account for, then you're going to put those lone pairs on to the, um, onto the central atom, which will be utilizing, depending on what period they're in, so phosphorus is in period 3, so that means that phosphorus will be utilizing its 3D orbitals to, um, to expand its octet, so it will use some D orbitals in bonding. Periods 1 and 2, so hydrogen and helium, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, they don't have d orbitals. And so they will not be utilizing d orbitals for bonding. So in periods one and periods two, we're never going to see an expanded octet. They don't have the quantum capacity to do that. Periods three, four, and five, where central atom is in periods three, four, and five, that's where we're going to see the expanded octet. Practice tomorrow.